in the last class we have discussed about the semiconductors and uh, how we can make a diode etc how we can form an extrinsic extrinsic semiconductor etc so today we are going to discuss uh, or rewind all those things again and uh, we will go into details of uh, the diode characteristics and its uses so you know that a semiconductor diode means it is a pn junction diode which is otherwise called a crystal diode a pn junction means a p type and n type regions are joined together and it forms a, a depletion layer in between the two surfaces and uh, that region is called a pn junction so a diode can be forward biased or reverse biased when it is connected to a battery or cell all those things we are very well know so when a diode is forward biased usually ordinary diodes when forward biased it uh, conducts and uh, when it is reverse biased it does not conduct that means the direction of current flow in a circuit which contains a diode depends upon the direction of the current flow in an ordinary circuit with uh, pure conductors the direction of current flow is immaterial but in the case of a rectifier uh, it is direction of current flow is a matter so such circuits are called uh, unilateral circuits or unidirectional circuits and uh, in the case of uh, the circuits which does not uh, depend upon the direction of the current flow are called bilateral circuit so a semiconductor diode is a uh, circuit which contains a semiconductor is a unilateral circuit so these unilateral conduction properties of a diode permits it to be used as a rectifier so in order to this discuss the before discussing the rectifier we have to uh, learn something about the vi characteristics of a diode or the simply the characteristics of a diode the vi characteristics means the voltage current characteristics of a diode that means when we apply a potential difference or a voltage across the two terminals of a diode then what is the relationship with the current that flows through that diode uh, with respect to the applied voltage so in this diagram this shows the this one shows the diode vi characteristics of a diode and here this portion for both voltage and current are positive that means this is a forward biased region that means when a diode is forward biased its vi characteristics is given by this first quadrant it is both voltage and current are positive here you can see that initially there is no uh, much change in current when the voltage is increased but at a particular voltage after that the voltage uh, when you increase the voltage the current starts to increase and this particular voltage in which the current starts to conduct is called a knee voltage this is the voltage required to overcome the potential barrier of a particular diode that knee voltage actually depends upon the nature of the diode for a germanium diode it is 0.3 volt and for silicon diode it is 0.7 volt and you have to consider or uh, we can operate a diode in forward bias mode beyond this region beyond the knee voltage so to knee voltage ideally we can say that there is no current flows through the circuit when the applied voltage is greater than the knee voltage that is the minimum voltage required to overcome the potential barrier then the current starts to flow through the circuit and remember that the order of this current the forward current is mainly obvious and uh, now 
let's see the reverse characteristics reverse characteristics means when a diode is reverse biased what is the relationship between the current and the voltage is in the circuit that is when you apply reverse biased means when the negative terminal of the battery is connected to the pure region of the diode and the positive terminal of the battery is connected to the end region of the diode the diode becomes reverse biased that means there is no current flows through the circuit but still you, you can see that there is a small current which is flowing through the circuit uh, during the reverse bias condition and this small current which flows through the circuit or through the diode when it is reverse bias is called the leakage current or reverse current it is very small it is of the order of micro amperes you can see that during the reverse characteristics of a diode the y axis is that is minus y axis is in micro amperes so when you increase the reverse voltage more than a particular value the diode abruptly starts to conduct and this is the region where the diode is damaged ordinary diodes get damaged and this breakdown this is due to the avalanche effect and this breakdown is called the avalanche breakdown now but a particular type of diode which are always used in reverse bias to conditions and uh, we will make use of this uh, uh, voltage we will use, apply the voltage is greater than the reverse voltage uh, the breakdown voltage and this type of uh, diodes are called uh, zener uh, diodes so ordinary diodes will not use in the uh, reverse bias to condition but ordinary uh, zener diodes are used in the reverse bias to condition so that is a particular type of diode, zener diode that we will discuss later. But ordinarily, the usually the ordinary diodes will not be operated in the reverse bias mode, and uh, it is always used in the uh, forward bias condition, and it will start to conduct beyond the new voltage region. So the operating point of a diode will lie beyond the new voltage. So that is the AI characteristics of a ordinary diode. Now, to study about the circuit, it is always easy to replace a particular circuit by equivalent circuit or a device by its, its equivalent circuit. An equivalent circuit of a device is a combination of electric elements which when connected in a circuit acts exactly as does the device when connected in the same circuit. That means if you are having a particular circuit device, if, if you can replace that device by the different circuit or electric elements and it's connected in the circuit this combination of the electric elements acts exactly as the device does. The importance of uh, replacing a device by its equivalent circuit is that the resulting network can be easily solved by the traditional circuit analysis techniques like uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law, Kirchhoff's current law, Norton's theorem, Thevenin's theorem, nodal analysis, mesh current analysis, etc. So different traditional circuit analysis techniques can be directly applied to solve a particular circuit if the device is, has been replaced by its equivalent circuit. So we will try to discuss the different approaches of uh, equalizing, equalizing a diode circuit. Here we can have three models. One is the approximate model. Approximate model means it is the actual equivalent circuit of uh, the diode. So here 
we can have a diode this is the diode so this diode has a internal resistance when it is connected in forward bias mode and it is called the forward resistance it is represented by r and this v0 is the knee voltage so in order to start conducting a diode in order to start the conduction through a diode the applied voltage must be greater than the knee voltage so we can say that there is a drop of some v0 that is the knee voltage in the diode itself so the applied voltage has been utilized to overcome this knee voltage so we will use this v0 as the knee voltage this is 0.3 for germanium and 0.7 volt for silicon and there is a forward resistance a small resistance offered by the resistor diode to the flow of current and which is usually 1 to 25 ohms in an ordinary diode so this is the approximate model of a diode now the simplified model here this ideal diode means nothing it is forward bias it conducts that's all the simplified model we will assume that the forward resistance is zero but still we are having a knee voltage or a potential drop across the pn junction so that is v0 is represented here so this is the simplified model and uh, the ideal model means there is no potential if the applied voltage is very much greater then the voltage drop uh, to how, uh, due to the internal resistance or the forward resistance of the diode can be neglected and also the knee voltage also can be neglected in that case the diode just acts like a conductor with zero resistance there is no voltage drop across a uh, diode when it is considered to be ideal if it is not we will otherwise mentioned then it will uh, the voltage applied across a diode will have two additional dropping effects one is to overcome the knee voltage v0 and the other one is to uh, there is a drop across uh, this forward resistance of the diode so this is the equivalent model of a diode circuit of a diode so whenever we are having a diode in a circuit to solve the current and voltage to or to solve the circuit it is better to all, uh, replace it by its equivalent circuit and usually generally we have to use this approximate model otherwise it is specified if it is specified as ideal then we can consider it as a uh, zero resistance when it is forward bias and uh, infinite resistance when it is or it li acts like a open switch when it is uh, reverse bias that is the ideal model okay now let's uh, recall some important terms which usually we will use in the context of electronics in the uh, regarding the diodes so let's recall those uh, terms again the forward resist the first one is the forward resistance forward resistance means it is the resistance uh, resistance means nothing but the opposition offered by an electric element to the flow of current so forward resistance means it is the opposition offered by a diode to the flow of current when it is forward biased and this forward resistance of a diode are of two types the for dc forward resistance and the ac forward resistance uh, as name implies that uh, dc forward resistance means it is the opposition to the direct current so this one represents the forward characteristics of a diode and here this is the knee voltage the minimum voltage which we have to apply to start the current flow so this is the uh, uh, representation of uh, forward characteristics of a diode suppose p is the operating point of the diode then the forward resistance dc forward resistance is obtained by the ratio of oa to ob that is rf is equal to oa by ob 
and uh, sc forward resistance is the ratio of the change in voltage across the diode to the corresponding change in the current that comes to this again this is the forward characteristics of a diode and p is the operating point so we will consider two small changes in the voltages that is b is the operating voltage then we will consider small changes in the voltage to a and c and the corresponding change in the current is d and f then the ratio of ac to df is called the forward ac forward resistance so that is the difference between how to calculate the uh, dc and ac resistance a forward resistance of a diode and remember that usually the dc conditions or dc uh, parameters are represented by the capital letters and the small letters are reserved for the ac parameters okay now next is the forward resistance so we will have a reverse resistance Reverse resistance means it is the opposition offered by a diode to the flow of current when it is reversed by us. Reverse. So this is the resistance of a reverse bias. The ratio of uh, reverse resistance to forward resistance for germanium is forty thousand is to one, and for silicon it is ten lakh is to one. That is. The germanium uh, is uh, silicon is having much greater than uh, much greater reverse resistance than the germanium, and uh, forward current. Another term is the forward current. That is the current flowing through a forward bias diode that we have already discussed when discussing the V I characteristics. So current flowing through a diode when it is forward bias is called the forward current and it is of the order of milliamperes, some hundreds and uh, two hundreds, three hundreds, etc. Milliamperes will be there usually. And uh, another term we have to use uh, forward current. Then we will have a reverse current or leakage current. It is the current that flows through a reverse bias diode. Or when a the diode is reversed by us, there is a small current which is of the order of microamperes will flow through the circuit, and which is due to the minority carriers in the circuit. The minority carriers means in a p-type of p-type semiconductor, we will have holes as the majority carriers, and uh, some uh, electrons will also be there. They are lesser in number. They are called minority carriers. So, due to the minority carriers, the, the, there is a current flows across the p-n junction, and which is called a reverse current or leakage current, which is very small. And for silicon, it is less than one microamperes, and for germanium, it is uh, up to or approximately hundred microamperes. Now, another uh, terminology which we will usually come across is the peak inverse voltage. This is a very important parameter regarding a diode. Usually, when a diode is connected in reverse bias condition, if it is greater than the peak inverse voltage, if it is, it will all uh, its maximum peak inverse voltage will be mentioned in the catalogs. Although, uh, if you operate the diode greater than this value, the diode get damaged. So this is the maximum reverse voltage that a diode can withstand without destroying the junction. So remember that peak inverse voltage is the maximum reverse voltage that a diode can withstand without destroying the junction. So usually we have to calculate the maximum or we have to find the maximum peak inverse voltages in most of the cases or we have should have a, an idea about the peak inverse voltage is when it is usually we will use the diodes now you are familiar with some uh, operations of the diode and uh, different uh, techniques to solve an electrical circuit is also familiar to you so we will have some problems here 
uh, one first problem is an AC voltage of peak value 20 volt is connected in series with a silicon diode and load resistance of 500 ohm. If the forward resistance of the diode is 10 ohm, fine. So it is mentioned that it is not an ideal diode. So we have to consider the diode to be as a approximate model. That is, it is having a voltage drop to uh, overcome the potential barrier as well as it is having a forward uh, resistance. So by using these parameters, we want to calculate the peak current through the diode that is the maximum current that flows through the diode and the peak output voltage that means the maximum voltage that appears across the load resistance. Now you are asked to find the same values that is peak current through the diode and as well as the output voltage through across the load resistance if the diode is assumed to be ideal. If the diode is assumed to be ideal, you have to remember that uh, the knee voltage should be zero, that you have to take it as zero, and the forward resistance also, you have to take it to be zero. So try this problem and uh, submit on the stipulated time. And another problem is again the same type, and uh, we are giving a circuit and you are asked to find the current through the diode in the circuit and here you are asked to assume the diode to be ideal one so if the diode is i will give you an hint, a hint that uh, if the diode is ideal then the current flowing through the 5 ohm resistor will be zero whatever current is drawn from the battery will be utilized for uh, will be will flow through the diode so it is very simple question those two simple questions you have to submit at uh, you have to submit uh, within half an hour